If you're watching this video, you're already using fluorescence in some way, or at least have an interest in it. You know how useful a tool it is. Fluorescence can be a powerful means for detecting things that might otherwise be hard to find, for checking that your experimental subjects are expressing the right protein, or for any of a wide variety of applications in science, industry, exploration of nature, and more. Take a look around the NITSE website for lots of examples. But fluorescence is usually a relatively weak effect, which is why fluorescence observation, and especially fluorescence search, is generally done in the dark. Working in the dark can be inconvenient or even unsafe. It would be nice to work while there is enough light to get around safely, but that can compromise your ability to see any fluorescence. If the fluorescence is super bright, like the stitching on this shirt, you might be able to get away with it, but that is not something you are generally going to encounter. To address this challenge, we have incorporated a special operating mode in our Excite flashlights that takes advantage of a visual trick to enhance your ability to detect fluorescing subjects when it is not dark, whether indoors or outside. Detecting anything visually is a question of contrast. Does the thing you want to see stand out against its background? If it's not going to stand out by its brightness, then how else? Humans are adapted to be very sensitive to changes in their visual environment. That's why warning lights blink and why you don't stand like a statue when you want to attract someone's attention. You wave at them. So how can we get fluorescence to wave at us? The Excite has a flashing mode that makes fluorescing subjects flash or blink at the same rate. Let's look at a simple visualization of how this works. We'll start out in the dark. Let's say you are searching with a blue light, passing it over the area you want to look at. But since you are wearing the barrier filter glasses, you don't even see your own beam. If something does for us, it will stand out when the beam passes over it. If the background is not dark, the brightness added to the scene due to fluorescence will not have the same contrast. There is an identical red spot appearing in this image in a different place. We didn't make it overly hard to see, but it certainly does not stand out in the same way. And of course, if the background were more complex, and not just the uniform color, this would be even harder. If we make the excitation source flash, the fluorescence flashes at the same rate, and now the spot is much easier to see. Let's take this into the real world. We're going to look at a leaf on a fairly puny mountain laurel. This was shot later in the day, and I used my body to cast shade on the target leaf. Direct sun would have been too bright for this to work. The leaves are modeled with damage from black or brown spot fungus. You might ask, does the fungus attack result in any fluorescence? We start with the leaf in the ambient light. You will see some movement in the video, as there was a light breeze when I shot this. Then we add the yellow blocking filter in front of the lens. Since we will be using the royal blue light, we need to shoot through this barrier filter in order to see the fluorescence. Now take the filter away, turn on the X8 in high power mode, and pass it slowly over the leaf. Add the yellow blocking filter back in. If you look very carefully, you may see some change in the leaf, but it is certainly not obvious. Now we take the filter away again and set the light in flashing mode. And add the filter back in. Now it is just plain easy to see the spots flashing back at you. Just to prove we're not cheating, here's the segment with the steady blue light again. And now I'm going to speed that segment up by a factor of three and play it several times in succession. Now you can definitely see the change in fluorescence. Finally, I went back out when it was dark to get a good photograph of the leaf fluorescence, using the Excite as the light source. I tried doing this with the leaf on the plant, but I needed about a two second exposure and there was just too much movement to capture a crisp image, so I took the leaf off the plant and placed it on a rock. So there we are, 
a good demonstration of how a flashing excitation light can assist in detecting fluorescence. It's not good for examining or photographing it, but unless you find your subject, there is nothing to examine. The flashing technique is not a universal solution. The effectiveness depends on a combination of how bright the fluorescence is and how bright the ambient light is. The brighter the light around you, the brighter the fluorescence will need to be, even with the flashing method. And we don't recommend using the flashing when you're in darkness. First of all, it's just plain annoying, like trying to work at a disco. And some people have photosensitive epilepsy and may be sensitive to flashing lights, especially bright ones, that can trigger seizures. Thanks for watching. There's more information on why flashing works on the Nightsea website at the web address you see here. If you have any questions, you'll see our contact information in the closing slide.